Hello and welcome to a brief lecture on run-ons and comma splices. Run-ons and comma splices are two of the most frequent types of errors in uh, college level writing uh, student essays. And um, in this brief lecture here I'm going to try to show you in very simple terms how, how to overcome both of these errors. Uh, in part, I think a lot of times they just aren't explained in simple enough terms and I guarantee you that they're not all that difficult to understand. So first of all, let's begin with a couple of definitions. So a run-on is created when two complete sentences are joined by either nothing at all or only a coordinating conjunction or a fanboy. See the list of fanboys over here is just an acronym for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. So run-on occurs when one of those two things happens. You have two complete sentences and between them, there's either nothing there, or there's only one of those conjunctions. Okay, a comma splice, and there's a lot of confusion about comma splices a lot of the time, but it's so simple. Same thing, basically, except those two complete sentences are joined only by a comma. So a comma splice can only occur when you already have a comma in the sentence. So why is it? out of all the different types of errors that can be made in the English language that these two are so common for college level writers. Well, I see two distinct causes for this. Number one is that you're trying to write more sophisticated sentences. So you get to college and you, I think most writers have this vague sense that because they're at college they have to kind of up the ante on their academic pro style. One thing that that means then is that where in the past you might have had um, a prevalence of simple sentences, you're now trying to make complex and compound sentences. When you make compound sentences in particular, what you're doing is taking two complete sentences and joining them into one. And that's one of the reasons why so many errors um, elicit from or at this point in your writing career. Uh, the other one is that some of us still just struggle to identify a complete sentence. And, in order to understand when a run-on or a comma splice might be occurring, you have to be able to understand complete sentences. So let's just turn to some examples. I know I'm moving really fast through this, but one of the challenges of online learning is that it, it's kind of self-motivated, and you know, you're going to have to do some work with the textbook, with looking up some terms and um, trying to understand some of these concepts on your own. Obviously, if you have any questions, though, feel free to let me know. I have to desire to learn also posted um, some exercises that you can do at home to help you prepare for the midterm, especially exercises on run-ons and comma splices, um, and subject verb agreement and pronoun agreement. So anyway, uh, we take two complete sentences, all right? The weather has been quite rainy. It is supposed to continue this way. Simple sentences, nothing you know, very uh, mysterious about that. You have subject, verb, completed thought, subject, verb, completed thought. All right, so run on comma splices occur when we take these two sentences and we tr try to join them into one, um, and in particular by making them a compound sentence. So run-ons occur, again, when you either have nothing between those two sentences or only one of these conjunctions. So, look at the first example there. I have two types of run-ons here. And I sort of abbreviate, I haven't written all of the sentence on either side here. I'm kind of just showing you the middle of the sentences where they join because that's where these problems do occur. So, if you have nothing between quite rainy and it is, that's a run-on. Or, if you only have the conjunction, one of your fanboys, between the two sentences, that's also a run-on. A comma splice, then, very similar to these two, except the difference is that you only have a comma between these two sentences. So we see up here where we just had two sentences, say, in a paragraph, and there's a period, space, and then you begin a new sentence. A run-on occurs when you either have nothing in that space, or you only have the conjunction. The comma splice occurs when you only have the comma. So how do we correct this problem? Well, uh, a couple of different thoughts for you. 
probably the most obvious one is that we combine this and this to make the complete unit. You have to have a comma and a conjunction in order for them to be strong enough to bond those two sentences together. It takes both, the comma and the conjunction. When you only have one, you create either a run-on or a comma splice. Another possibility in this case is that we could join them with a semicolon. I want to take just a second to show you something here on the overhead. I know on the video this may be just a little bit grainy or hard to see. Um, So, in the English language, there are six basic punctuation patterns, and this uh, PDF is available on our Desire to Learn site, so you can study it yourself. Um, first of all, you just have a simple, complete sentence, right, with a period at the end. Punctuation pattern number two is where you actually put a semicolon between two complete sentences. Now, real quickly here, I kind of want to debunk the semicolon. Because I think there's a lot of confusion about what semicolons are for. I was never taught how to properly use one as an undergrad. In fact, I know um, as I continued through my undergraduate education, I labored under the misconception that a semicolon is something you use kind of as a fancy comma. Um, that when I was writing a really long sentence and I, I kind of didn't know what to do next, I would drop in a semicolon. And oddly enough, I was never really called out on that. Um, particular, uh, you know, pattern of, of error making, but really what a semicolon is for is, rather than a fancy comma, it's more of a period for special occasions, because it's used where ordinarily a, a period might be used. The only difference is that you don't capitalize what follows it. <clears throat> so, um, if we look at another example here. Um, or back to this example anyway, the weather has been quite rainy, semicolon, it is supposed to continue this way. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, why can't I just use semicolons all the time? Well, frankly, there's no rule that says that you can't, but here's something that I think you can abide by, a, sort of a special occasion. When the second sentence begins with a pronoun that renames the subject of the previous sentence, then we know that there's a really close, intimate relationship between those two sentences because essentially they share the same subject and the second sentence is just going to give you more information on the subject of the first sentence. I think that's a good place for a semicolon. Take this example over here. The Cardinals are having a good season, semicolon. They stand a decent chance of winning their division. So both of those are complete sentences by themselves. That's the first important part. The second important part is that the second sentence, or the subject of the second sentence, they, gives you more information about cardinals, the subject of the first sentence. All right, moving right along. So we, we've looked at basic, a basic pattern for the way run-ons are created, the way comma splices are created, how to correct those in some of the most simple ways. Now let's look at a couple of um, sort of exceptions that come up with some frequency. One has to do with what are called conjunctive adverbs. Conjunctive adverbs include words like however, furthermore, therefore, nevertheless. Um, and, you know, there, there's sort of a certain compound construction to each of those words. It's sort of a familiar feel. For a list of them, you can check page 503 in your text. Whenever you use a word like however between two complete sentences, it always needs to be preceded by a semicolon, not a comma. If you just put a comma there, it's a comma splice. So if the sentence said, the weather has been quite rainy, however, it should dry up soon, you put a semicolon before it and a comma after it. Okay? That's when that conjunctive adverb is being used to join two sentences together. Finally, subordinating conjunctions. Now, this is a huge ball of wax here that I'm just going to gloss over real quickly, but it is one of our other punctuation patterns. I'm going to pull this back up again real quick. So, 
So here's the conjunctive adverb, like I was just telling you about semicolon, conjunctive adverb, and then another complete sentence. Um, number four on this list is using the fanboys. All right, comma, and then one of those conjunctions. And then there's these two patterns, five and six, and this is subordination. Now, when, when you look at this initially, it almost looks like this is a comma splice because you have a comma between two complete sentences. However, in, in both cases for five and six, you've made one of those complete sentences subordinate or dependent by placing one of these conjunctions like if, because, since, when, while, although, after, either at the beginning of it or in the middle of the sentence. So, I know this is going really fast and it may be a little overwhelming, so you probably need to look this up in your text on page 505. Of course, at this point, as a speaker of the language and a writer of the language, especially if English is your native language, this may seem um, fairly intuitive to you, but um, we could here put, say the weather has been quite rainy, because we are in a La Nina pattern. Actually, I actually don't know if that's true, but just as an example, notice how we just put because in here, and it actually didn't require a comma. Now, looking all the way back up here, you might have a tendency to think that, oh, well, that's a run-on, but it's not, because a subordinating conjunction in the middle of a sentence does not require a comma before it. One interesting thing about subordination is that you can always flip-flop it. So we can also take this because, this dependent part of the clause, and put it back at the beginning of the sentence. Because we are in a La Nina pattern, the weather has been quite rainy. And that's one of the ways you know you're dealing with a subordinating conjunction when you can flip-flop it like that. All right, well, that's all for this lecture. Again, I know that's an awful lot of information, so if you have any questions, please let me know. Make sure that you start studying run-ons, comma splices, fragments, subject verb agreement, and pronoun agreement, especially um, in your textbook in preparation for the run-on. And uh, thanks for watching.